Many people are searching for God's purpose for their lives. Artist Freeman Nelson is a pastor and author who helps inspire positive transformations. His new book, Morphed, describes how each of us can be changed from a person burdened with regret to someone who is free to develop a close personal relationship with God. Available at Amazon, your local bookstore, or call 1-800-473-5106. That's 800-473-5106. The following program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Art Nelson Ministries. The moment you get fully persuaded in a thing, you take ownership of it. Full persuasion means that's mine now, that's my possession. It is so, and now I respond differently. Um, let me give you another analogy of ownership for a second. Um, there's people who are renters, and then there's people who are owners. If you are rent, currently renting an apartment or renting the place you live in, you discover that because you're a renter, you can't really make any changes and there's lots of limits on your life because as a renter, you don't really own the stuff that, that's there. So you have to, you can't put holes in the walls and there's all sorts of stuff that you can't do because you're not an actual owner. In fact, if you're an owner, you not only have unlimited power of the thing, of, uh, over the thing you own, but you have the ability to put anybody out who is squatting on your territory. I'm glad you came to join us today. I want to talk to you today about the same subject matter that we've been hitting for the last couple of weeks. What I want to do is I want to intentionally discuss our healing covenant because we have a covenant of health. And our covenant of health means that we've got benefits that we can partake of that will cause us to remain exempt from recession, exempt from the curse, exempt from all of the problems that the people who are without covenant have to deal with. So I'm kind of talking to the believers today. If you're not a believer yet, go ahead and listen up because these are all of the benefits that you're gonna partake of as well, the moment, the instant, the second that you become a believer. Something I wanna show you though, is that I am a Luke 5, 17 teacher, which means in the scripture there, it says that as he was teaching, the power of the Lord was present to heal. I say that because while you're listening to this show, while you're watching this show, while you're sitting up looking and listening, the Spirit of God is infiltrating your body, infiltrating your issues, infiltrating your problems, and perfecting that which concerns you. So I want you to feel free all throughout this show to just stop and do whatever it is you couldn't do before. I want you to, if your hand couldn't move, I want you to move your hand. Just keep listening to the teaching. And remember, the Word of God is where the power of healing is. In fact, the Bible tells us in Psalms 107 that God sent His Word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. So you're gonna be healed while you're listening. So this is one of those teachings. Now I wanted to jump into the scripture. And the scripture that I wanted to touch on again, it's the same scripture that we've been looking at and it's found in Psalms 103. And I'm gonna start reading at verse two and I'm gonna read through verse five. And it says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Now look at that. That scripture tells us a lot. One of the biggest things that that scripture tells us is that when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord, he came with benefits. Now I talked about it before. If you get a good job with good benefits, those benefits are available to you at any time, but you have to be a partaker, which means you have to make a willful decision to say, I'm gonna go get my benefits. I'm gonna go partake of what's already mine. And it tells us in this scripture the way to do it. It actually says in the scripture that it blesses the Lord, it makes God smile, it makes God happy when our soul refuses to forget about our benefits. It blesses the Lord, I'll say that again, when our soul, our mind, our will and emotions refuse to forget about our benefits. You see, if a person has a good job and they don't partake of the benefits, they got, a, like I said before, they got a dental plan, but they got busted up teeth and they don't ever get them cleaned or do anything with it. It's their fault. It's not that the benefits weren't available, it's that they chose not to partake. So I'm talking to you today about partaking of these benefits that are listed. And it starts in verse three. It says that we're forgiven of all of our iniquities. That word iniquities means the bend towards sin and the sin itself. 
So we're forgiven of all of our sins. And then it says, who healeth all our diseases. That means that everything, anything that you've ever dealt with, from the smallest thing, from a headache, to the biggest thing of cancer, HIV, God heals it all. And you have a covenant of health. So look, I kind of wanted to touch back on what I was talking about at the end of the last show. At the end of the last show, I was explaining to you, first of all, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We find that in Romans 10, 17. But this is what I wanted to hit on real quickly. I wanted you to know, first of all, let me give you this other scripture. I want you to know that grace and peace, the Bible says, is multiplied to us by the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ, our Lord. So that means how do you get more grace, which is unmerited favor? How do you get more peace, which is everything whole and nothing broken? It comes by the knowledge of God. So anytime we remind ourselves about the knowledge of our covenant, we empower that word to begin to work in our life. So when it says grace and peace are multiplied unto us by the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ, our Lord is telling us that we need to on purpose continue to give attention to the knowledge that healed us, to the knowledge that we have a covenant of healing, to the knowledge that Jesus took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses and by his stripes are healed. We need to continue to give focus to that. And I told you in the last show, I talked about how faith is like a bus. And when I said faith is like a bus, I explained to you how when I was a kid, I'm here in Seattle, Washington, as you know, when I was a kid, I used to ride the Metro bus all the way up and down Seattle. And I kind of explained to you that faith is like a bus because it's just the perfect analogy. When I was a kid, I would stand on the curb of the bus and I would be looking down the street. And what was I looking for? I was looking for the thing that I knew was coming. And the thing that I knew was coming was the bus. And I would sit there and I would continue to wait because I believed it was coming. And the Bible tells us in Romans 10, 17, that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. First of all, a lot of times people think, well, I heard it once. And because I heard it once, I already know that. And I know the world says, if you heard it once, you don't need to hear it again. But the world is wrong because in fact, the word of God talks about a couple of things. One of the things it talks about is it talks about vain repetitions. Vain repetitions, which means when you repeat something over and over again, that is fruitless. And the reason the Bible talks about that in the scripture is because God wants us to know that there's a such thing as fruitful repetitions. In fact, the word vain means fruitless, which means it doesn't bear fruit. It's like, uh, I don't know, uh, what's a vain repetition? Uh, uh, hut hut on the, on the football field or something, something that just has no power in it. So, but listen to this. I want you to see this because it's really important for you to understand. There's a such thing as a fruitful repetition, which means that if I continuously, repetitively hear the right thing, it's gonna cause faith to come just like the bus comes. So let me explain to you how that works. When it says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, the word hearing and hearing in the Greek is actually the word where we get the English word echoes. So what it's actually saying is faith comes by echoes and echoes of the word of God. Not from having heard once, not from having heard before. Faith doesn't come by having heard. Faith comes by hearing, which means present tense. Continuous, consistent, echoes, present tense. Now, what's a good way to think about it? It's kind of like this. If I hear the word that Jesus took my infirmities and bore my sicknesses and by his stripes I'm healed, and I hear it again, Jesus took my infirmities and bore my sicknesses and by his stripes I'm healed, and then I continue to hear it, what happens is it begins to build a belief in me and that belief will carry me to the possession of the thing that I believed. Let me, let me kind of um, elaborate a little bit more on what I talked about on the last show when I explained that your belief or your faith is like a time machine. It's like a vehicle that takes you from one place to the other. In fact, if you are at the place of poverty and you want to be at the place of prosperity, you've got to grab a hold of the word of God and you have to believe unto prosperity. The Bible says in Romans 10, 10, that with the heart man believeth unto uh, righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So what does that mean? That means that my heart actually takes me somewhere. What does it mean to believe in the heart? A better way to say that is to have a picture on the inside. I'm gonna say that again. 
A better way to say believing in the heart is to have a picture on the inside, something I can see, something that I believe because I can see it in my imagination. When it says forget not all of his benefits, when it says that he wants to crown us with loving kindness, satisfy our mouth with good things and renew our strength like the eagles, how come the scripture is written like that? How come the scripture is written with pictures of things like an eagle, a crown? How come he uses those terminologies in the scriptures? It's because he wants us to see what he is saying. In fact, the word behold is, two, is in the Bible 212 times. Then the word behold means to think, imagine, and picture on the inside and hold the picture until what you behold becomes what is so. So believing with the heart is carrying you from the place where you first see it to where it actually is your possession. Now, let me show you how transportation works because like I said, when I was waiting for the bus as a child, I would be sitting there waiting on the bus because I believed it was coming and I would be sowing my time, sowing my patience to consistently wait for what I knew was coming. And then when the bus came, I did something. What did I do when the bus came? I stepped out from the curb. I did a step, I took a step. I stepped out, which means I took an action. So the moment the bus actually came, I took action and I climbed onto the bus and then the bus, my action made me climb onto the bus actually and then the bus took me to where I wanted to be. You see, faith works the same way, family. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by echoes and echoes of the word of God. It means hearing again and again and again. God, 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 God loves, 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 loves. Me, 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 me. When we get to think, <laughs> when we begin to think about the love of God, when we begin to think about what the word of God says, when we begin to think about the fact that God spared not his own son, but he delivered him up for us all. And the Bible says, so how should he not with them also freely give us all things? When we begin to think about that and we begin to say it and we begin, begin to hear it, and then we begin to picture it, and then we begin to grow the image on the inside, what happens is we get to a place of what the Bible calls full persuasion. Now, full persuasion is important because just like I talked to you on an earlier show about the importance of taking ownership, is the, the, mom is the, uh, the moment you get fully persuaded in a thing, you take ownership of it. Full persuasion means that's mine now, that's my possession, it is so, and now I respond differently. Um, let me give you another analogy of ownership for a second. Um, there's people who are renters, and then there's people who are owners. If you are rent, currently renting an apartment or renting the place you live in, you discover that because you're a renter, you can't really make any changes and there's a lots of limits on your life because as a renter, you don't really own the stuff that that's there. So you have to, you can't put holes in the walls and there's all sorts of stuff that you can't do because you're not an actual owner. In fact, if you're an owner, you not only have unlimited power of the thing of, uh, over the thing you own, but you have the ability to put anybody out who is squatting on your territory. I saw a show a long time ago and it was talking about Las Vegas after the bubble burst on the housing thing that they had back in, I think, 2009 or something like that. And it said that lots of people owned houses in Vegas and they had lived out of state. And then when they came back, they saw that there were squatters living in their property. And so they had to call the police and they had to exercise their authority and they had to get the squatters off of their property. Now, how come they had a right to force the squatter to leave? The only reason they had a right to force the squatter to leave is because they were an owner. They was an owner. Owners are the ones who have power. Those who aren't owners have no power over the thing that they want to possess. In fact, I gave you an example of a person with a cell phone. If you sit your cell phone down and somebody comes and touches it, you immediately get upset. Hey, 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 stop. You immediately want to fight. You immediately want to rush them. You immediately want to correct them. Why? Because you own the phone. You see, ownership makes you respond with violence when someone tries to take what's yours or when someone tries to squat on what you own. And you see, these bodies are ours. God gave us these. This is my body. In fact, the spirit of God lives in me in this body. And the covenant that came with receiving Jesus as my Lord, I've taken possession of it in my body. I have a covenant of healing and wholeness. I have a covenant 
that says that the curse can't show up in my life, that says that the sickness can't touch me, equivalent to Passover, when the death angel was going around, I don't know if you've read the story in the Bible in, the, in Genesis, but it talks about during the Passover that the death angel, uh, it's actually not in Genesis, it's in Exodus, the death angel's going by because there's a plague in the earth and the people of God had the blood of Jesus on their, on, uh, the blood that represented the blood of Jesus on their doorpost, and as a result, sickness could not enter that area of the of the uh, of the uh, land it couldn't touch the people who were considered the body or god's family in the earth they couldn't touch them same with me my body belongs to god i have a covenant with god in fact the curse can't touch me or get near me because i've taken possession or ownership of what the scripture said by believing it with my heart now i'm gonna go back to the time machine on the believing with the heart because we believe unto and i want you to see this Anytime travel is done in the spirit realm, it's done with the heart. What that means is with my heart, I travel from the place of poverty to the place of prosperity by looking at the scriptures, seeing the scriptures and saying the scriptures. I see it and I imagine it. I say it and I imagine it. I see it and I imagine it. I say it and I imagine it. And my belief takes me from the place of poverty to the place of prosperity. It takes me from the place of being available for the curse and the sickness to come on me to the place where the curse can't touch me. And if it gets near me, not only would it roll off me like water on a duck's back, but the curse would be canceled and its sickness potential, sickness causing potential would be eliminated because I have an understanding that the Bible tells me that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And you see, between sin and death is what's called sickness. In fact, when it's talking about that scripture there in Romans chapter eight, when it says the law of spirit life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. Sin is the seed that opens the door to unlock death. So what happened was the Jesus, the Bible says the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. What that means is there's a, a, an empowerment a law that takes place and that law cannot be changed when we take possession of the law which is the word of god and it says that the law of the spirit of that means the spirit from within life it sets us free from the law of sin and death when we take the law of the spirit that's within life and we possess it by believing it let me show you what it says in john 6 63 jesus was speaking to the disciples and he said the words that i speak unto you they are spirit and they are life, which means that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that makes us free from the law of sin, the curse, sickness, and death, the thing that makes us free is words. Are you serious, free? Just words alone? Yes, words. Taking possession of words with your heart. Believing in your heart to where you travel from the place of pain to the place of peace. Believing in your heart to where you travel from the place of a sinner to the place of the righteous. Believing in your heart to where you travel from the place of the cursed to the place of the blessed. But remember the heart takes possession. The heart is the traveling agent. Now I could take you all through the Bible and become extra spiritual and give you these deep analogies that I know about in the word of God. For instance, I, I'll show you a couple of them for you Bible scholars. Uh, Moses, traveled by believing in his heart all the way back to the very beginning and he wrote the first fives in the first five words in the bible that said in the beginning god created now how did moses see that in the beginning god created so that he could write that in what's called the torah the first five books of the bible he saw it in his heart he believed all the way back to the very beginning and god showed him his ways in fact there's a scripture that talks about god showing israel his acts and showing moses his ways so how did he see it God took him back there and showed him. And as a result of what he saw, he acted by writing it so that we could read it and gain access to what God did. That's all over the Bible. Abraham, uh, it tells us like I talked about in John chapter eight, verse 56, Jesus says that Abraham rejoiced when he saw Jesus' what? Day. He saw Jesus' what? Day. That means that Abraham traveled in his spirit from the time 2,000 years before Jesus that he was living in all the way into the future where Jesus was and he saw the day that the Savior would be born and that the Savior would save mankind from sin, forgive us and give us access to God. He saw it, he rejoiced, praise God, he got excited and he got glad. 
Now, what does that tell you? That tells you that with the heart, man believeth unto it, takes you somewhere. In fact, the whole book of Revelations was written by John, and John was on the Isle of Patmos, and he says, on the Lord's day, and he traveled into the future, and he saw everything that was gonna happen in the last day. He saw the, 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 the seven seals, he saw the trumpets, he saw all of the stuff uh, that Revelation speaks about taking place. Now, what was he looking at? He was looking at the future. In fact, he was prophesying it so that we could read Revelations and know what season that we're in. I mean, it's all over the Bible, all over the Bible. Paul said he was taken up into the third heaven. Where was he taken up to the third heaven? In his heart. He believed it in his heart. He saw it in his heart. But just like God can show you things in your heart, the devil can too. If you look at Matthew 4 and 4, when it talks about the devil tempting Jesus, it says that he took Jesus up into a high place and showed him all the kingdoms and said, I'll give you all of these if you will bow down to me. Where is Jesus seeing all of the kingdoms at? He's believing it. He's beholding it in his heart. It's on the inside. You see, we on purpose grab a hold of the scripture and we begin to envision it. In fact, the way I'll show you how I do it just to make it easy. When I say Jesus himself took my infirmities and bore my sicknesses and by his stripes I'm healed. And then when I say that Jesus has redeemed me from the curse and that the blessing is on my life and I'm blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed coming in, blessed going out above, only not beneath the head, not the tail, having more than enough to lend and no need to borrow. God blesses those who bless me and curses those who curse me. That's all scriptures that I'm telling you. When I say it and I say it repetitively because it's fruitful repetition that makes me say it again and again so that it echoes in my heart. But when I say that, I picture a bubble of protection around me. In fact, I picture the favor of God surrounding me like a shield. So it's like I'm walking around in a bubble. <laughs> now that sounds kind of funny. You think to yourself, so I can just imagine what I want to? Absolutely. Whatever you imagine that comes from the Word of God that solidifies that what the Word of God says is yours, that imagination releases the power of God to perform itself in your life. So I see that no sickness or, or, or curse can get near me. I see that no evil can befall me, neither can any uh, uh, plague come near my dwelling. I see because of the word that I've heard, that I've said, that I've looked at, and the picture that I saw that came out of the word that I said, that I heard, that I looked at, I've grown it. I've grown it on the inside, and God wants you to grow it on the inside. God wants you to not be, what's the word, lazy when it comes to the things of God. Now I say that because I know we live in a microwave society and the world is like, if I can't get it in 30 seconds, I don't really want it. So, okay, your God will heal me, but I got 30 seconds right now and it's not that serious. Well, if you wanna be lazy in the things of God, because it's not hard, it's not real hard to, to take a hold of the promises of God. In fact, it's actually easy. If you don't wanna give time to the word of God and you don't consider the word of God valuable enough for you to put your energy into imagining it on purpose, into saying it on purpose, into beginning to declare what you believe and say, I'm healed because God said I'm healed, not because of, of anything I can say see or feel, if you don't want to get to that place because you're lazy, you'll just find that the stuff that you don't want gets to stick in your life. I say that because, and I'm going to touch on it in the next couple of shows, and I, I, let me see, I, I don't know if I'm going to have time really on this one, but I'm going to touch on it a little bit. I'll just go ahead and give you this statement now. I want you to know that condemnation is the glue that the curse sticks to. I'm going to say that again. Condemnation is the glue that the curse sticks to. And what happens is when you don't receive the righteousness that comes from God by meditating on it and, re and receiving that Jesus died for your sins, what you do receive and you do have instead in its place is condemnation, which means that you believe that you deserve to be punished for the sins that you've done wrong. But the moment that you receive that Jesus paid for my sin, and you imagine that when Jesus died on the cross, that that punishment was to pay for my sin, the moment you begin to see that, and then you see that he died and he rose from the dead so that I could rise again brand new, the moment that you begin to see that, it turns off condemnation. And remember I said condemnation is the glue that the curse sticks to. I'll elaborate more on that on the next show. Be sure not to miss it because if you've got condemnation in you in any way, form, or fashion, it gives room for the enemy's curse to stick. The enemy's out throwing curses like darts waiting for him to stick somewhere. In fact, the Bible says that he goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But who, 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 the only people he can devour is the ones who have condemnation. And you have condemnation if you condemn yourself by believing that your sins aren't forgiven. And you also have condemnation if you are holding unforgiveness and bitterness towards someone else. So you actually unlock the curse to stick 
just by being in unforgiveness and holding condemnation for someone else. I know they did you wrong. I know they did bad stuff. But if you hold condemnation saying they deserve to be punished, the same condemnation you hold is judging you. So it's important to recognize Jesus died for my sins. He forgave me. If he loved me enough to die for me and raise from the dead and then forgive me for everything I ever did and ever will do, well then I can choose to take the same forgiveness that he forgave me with and forgive that family member who abused me. Forgive that person who told me to have that abortion. Forgive myself for having that abortion. I can choose to forgive myself and the people around me so that the glue for the curse to stick to it isn't there. It's not present. It's not available for the enemy to make anything stick in my life. And then what happens is my righteousness consciousness, because I believe what Jesus did is so in my life, it begins to perform. And because I meditated on it and I wasn't lazy about it, and I didn't half step with it and see it like, well, I heard that at church one day or five years ago, but well, you didn't hear it again and again. And God didn't say faith came by hearing or having heard once. It says by echoes and echoes, faith comes by echoes and echoes. And you know faith is there when you take an action. In fact, like I said, in Romans 10 and 10, it says with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and then with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You see, Anytime you believe enough and you meditate on it enough, you're gonna eventually say something about it. You're gonna say, I own it. It's mine now. I own healing. I own health and wholeness. I own the blessing. It's mine. And once you say it's mine, since now I've taken possession of the blessing, when the curse tries to come and sickness or something, you might even have a sneeze or something, you say, sickness, get up out of here. Just like the owner of that house told those squatters, get up out of here. You have to be willing to take a stand because you have meditated on the word of God until you came to the place to where you were fully persuaded. Many people are searching for God's purpose for their lives. Artist Freeman Nelson is a pastor and author who helps inspire positive transformations. His new book, Morphed, describes how each of us can be changed from a person burdened with regret to someone who is free to develop a close personal relationship with God. Available at Amazon, your local bookstore, or call 1-800-473-5106. That's 800-473-5106. If you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, can I have the honor of leading you in the prayer of salvation? Did you know that God loved you so much and wanted a relationship with you so much that he sent his son Jesus to come to the earth to die for your sins so that he could raise Jesus from the dead and you too could die to sins and then be raised from the dead brand new. If you'll pray this simple prayer right after me, today you can begin again and this will be your new birth birthday. Just say this simple prayer, say this, say, Father God, in Jesus' name, today, Lord, I receive you as my Lord. I receive you as my Savior. I give you my sin and I receive your righteousness. And I now declare that I'm in a right relationship with God. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God, you just made a great decision. And welcome to eternity with me. In fact, we'll both be in heaven together experiencing the goodness of God forever, friend. And I want